it's Loopline, and it's January of 2019. Scrapebox just recently came out with the Bing Image Scraper add-on, and if you don't already have it installed, you can get to it by going to the Add-ons menu and Show Available Add-ons, and then you can find the Bing Image Scraper, install it, and then once it's installed, you can go to the Add-ons menu and launch it from here. If you've used the Google Image Scraper, it's a lot similar in the concept. Obviously, we're scraping images, but we're just doing it from Bing. Uh, just because sometimes Bing can give us images, Google can't, or more images, and, and it's just nice to have more options. So, um, pretty basic as we run through here, you kind of think about this as divided into two sides. So, everything over here on the left is one set of functions, and everything over here on the right is a different set. On the left-hand side, we have the option of actually scraping URLs of where the images are located at from Bing. And on the right hand side we have like an image downloader where it goes out and gets the actual images because obviously Bing doesn't have the images, they just list the images, you know, the URLs to the images which are hosted on whatever sites. So let's just type in a couple of keywords to get started. Car, boat, truck. Really basic stuff going on here. You put in your keywords, you can load a list of keywords, you can clear out the list, and then you can choose to use proxies or not on the actual side here and if you don't have proxies set up in here it won't give you this box so this proxies box and for reference this proxies box when we get to it but the proxies box here it's pulling from here so if I were to go here and just set up some proxies let me do it then it could pull from it obviously this is a fake proxy it's important to note that it pulls only on startup so even though I've added a proxy here I can't go and check this box again which is fine if I want to use this proxy, which I don't, but we'll show you, I would just have to go to add-ons and then load it again, and then it will pull the proxies from here. So if you make changes after you've loaded the add-on, then it's not going to work. See, and now I can check the box, but I'm going to leave it unchecked because I don't want to use this fake proxy. It'll mess it up. And so let's punch in our keywords again. And as we go down through here, if we're using proxies or not, that's obviously basic and standard. Um, we have size options including fixed where I can specify here what size I want it if it's fixed otherwise it's any. I can choose colors, I can choose my type if it's a photo clip art, line drawing, the layout, square wide tall, if it has people in it like just faces, heads and shoulders, I can choose dates, you know time ranges, I can choose the license type if it's free or public or not yada yada. Um, I can reset the filter so if I choose whatever you know get it all I can just reset it and then here is my connections now this is the connections again to Bing so bear in mind Bing at the time of this video anyways is pretty lenient on IP bands but that doesn't mean that that won't change at any given time and I've heard some people saying in the past like three to six months that it has gotten a little tighter than it used to be but still much more lenient than Google so especially if you're having issues with IPs banned from using the Google image grabber try the Bing image grabber and probably get a lot more images with a lot less hassle as far as IP bands go anyways and so then we have the option down here for the actual images per keyword so I'm just gonna say I want 10 images per keyword nothing fancy it'll go all the way up to a thousand you can punch in whatever you want and just change it back to a thousand um, is the maximum because that's the maximum Bing allows that's not the add-on it would go to a million if you let it but the Bing only allows a maximum of 1,000 per keyword that doesn't mean you'll get a thousand there may not be a thousand maybe they'll cut you off but you can get up to 1,000. And so then we actually are going to choose the locate option here. And what the locate does is it's locating the image URLs for these keywords. You can see here it's going to Bing, picking up all of the website URLs for the actual keywords for these things. And so that is how the Bing part works. And then, of course, we have stop. But that's how the Bing part works. Now we go over here to the actual image scraper part. We have our image URLs. And now we need to download our images directly to our computer from the end websites. So let's talk about these settings. First, we have the option to arrange images in folder based on keywords. What this means is it creates a folder based on the name. So if I choose this, which I will, if I leave this unchecked, it'll download all the images and jam them all into one folder, which is fine. Or if I choose this, it'll download all the images that are from the car keyword and put them in a folder called car. It'll download all the images that are from the truck keyword and put them in a, keyword, a folder called truck and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that checked add the keyword to the image name obviously it's gonna have each image has its own image name if you choose this it will then insert the keyword like the keyword car or truck or boat into the image name so that you know what that keyword is from um, so I'll go ahead and leave that check just so you can see what it does we have the option to resize the images from whatever size they are to something else as well as change the format from whatever they are to all being the same format 
and we have connections over here and proxies as well. Now this connections is for downloading from the website itself. So again, over here, the connections are to Bing, so you don't want to go crazy so you don't get your IPs blocked. But over here on the images side, if you see that these are all from the same website for some reason, which is probably not going to happen, but if it did, um, you probably want to go lower on the connections, but over here you can go higher, so I could probably turn this up to 100 if I wanted, because these are all unique domains. So each one of these domains is only going to be hitting maybe once or twice. You know, I see a couple of duplicates in here, like here. Um, there's a couple, but um, even a couple of connections to a domain at once isn't uncommon, especially for downloading images. So you don't want to go too crazy here and put it at like a thousand or something where your computer can't handle it or Windows can't handle it. But um, anyways, 10 is what it comes at, and that's what I'm going to leave it at. Again, I have the option to use proxies here. By default, I recommend not to use proxies on the image scraper side. On the Bing side, it's fine, but on the image scraper side, you're just going to a website, and this looks like a browser to the end website, and the entire point of a website existing is to serve you up the content so they want to give you the pictures so there's no reason they would want to block you unless again um, you're working with particular websites that have you know all the same thing so for example let's just jump down here I can load my own URL so if I get a list of image URLs and it's all one website then I want to control the connections and turn those down so I'm not hammering away all on one website and let's say that the website has blocked my IP. Maybe because of the country I live in, maybe because I've already done some stuff and I accidentally got it blocked because I went too fast or whatever. Then you could use proxies for that. So if you load in all the same domain or you load in domains that block your country or that you've already been working with or something like that, you can use proxies, but otherwise it's, you're going to have a better experience if you just leave it off, most likely. I can select a target and download, so let's do that. We'll just go over here and go for a folder called video and I'm just going to select that. It's already started downloading whatever I hit that so you can see here the status it comes through and it's telling everything and it's reading the image so we'll let that do that but once it's done it's already auto saving the images to that folder I selected which is just here so we can you know we can see them they're here but we can actually save off the list of URLs itself and the keywords. So here we have the option to save just a list of URLs. Let's say you get 150,000 and you don't have time to download them all right now. So you can save the list for later. Um, we can save the URLs and the keywords. So it'll save the URLs with the keyword as well. And then we can load URLs later and then we can exit. Now bear in mind if right now everything's in memory and it has the the keyword stored with the URL so it knows that this URL goes to this keyword so I will get this option to create these folders like this if I save the URLs later and then load them in and just save URLs when I load them back in it's not going to have any idea what keyword they went to so this option where it creates folders isn't going to work nor is the naming of the keywords because I'm just saving URLs and loading them in now something else you can do is if you save the URLs and the keyword and then load that file in, it will, which is what I just did, so you can see it here. We can save that and load it in, and it'll bring our keywords back and our URLs, and it'll give us this option. So if we just save URLs, for example, and I'm just going to make it up here, overwrite this file. If we load them in, you can see, I now these options are disabled. I don't have them, and the keywords were already there, but um, I don't have them because it doesn't know what's going on because I just saved the URLs. But if I save the URLs with the keywords, well, I already did it then I can go here and load them in and again you'll see I have that option because it now knows what keyword is associated with what. And so here's the end result. We have our folders and so boat, inside boat we have all of our boat pictures and see the word boat it's stuck here on each one it has given the keyword in the file name and then the same thing for cars and for trucks and that sort of thing. So you would have a whole list of um, folder names there if you did that. Again, if you didn't choose to do those options, that's fine. And so that's basically the Bing Image Scraper add-on. A great option to get images if you're having you know, issues with IP bands from Google or just to not have those issues in the first place. And honestly, I didn't try it, but I bet you could get a lot of images without even using proxies over here. If you just set connections to one, you know, you could probably get a lot done. Definitely a lot more than Google. And so that is the Bing Image Scraper add on. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.